So of course we're going to get in close and have a look at the car. But before we do, I guess we've got to answer the big question. Why Gen 3? Why was it actually needed? Why the change? Well, I reckon that's a threefold question. One, manufacturer relevance. Number two, the cost of competition for teams. And number three, always looking to enhance the competition. So let's delve in a bit closer and answer some of those questions more specifically and what they've done with this Gen 3 car introduction to answer those questions. So let's talk about manufacturer relevance. It's an important topic, it's an interesting topic, it causes a lot of debate, but it's where we need to be as a category and it's where we've kind of come from. The first reality is, so many of our previous years have been based around Commodore and Falcon. The reality also is that they're not made anymore. So that's how we landed, remaining with a Ford product with the current Mustang that we're racing, albeit that we had to modify it quite heavily to fit our current car of the future platform that we race on now. That's not what the future is going to look like. But supercars want the category to remain relevant by using very much the shape, the facsimile, if you like, of the vehicles, a more muscular, bigger brother of what you can buy on the showroom floor. And for the moment, although there's other manufacturers are welcome to come along, we are very fortunate that Mustang and Camaro want to play that game. The manufacturer relevance in the Gen 3 program is paramount. Um, we needed to go and ask their permission to use these body styles. Uh, in Gen 3 and, and this is what we're trying to do, we're trying to attract more manufacturers in. When you look at these cars you can see their styling, you can see the front fascia on these cars looks like the road car. So we're using nearly 80% of the road car surface in our bodywork design so you'll be able to sit the cars side by side uh, with their counterpart, their road going counterpart and it'll just look like a, a neat aggressive uh, version of the road car. They put so much emphasis on this car from GM side of things is because it's got almost the, the most road car DNA out of any racing car that they've produced. NASCAR, they have to conform to a sort of still a stock body, um, but for us it's just uh, they've got an open, a, a clean, clean slate basically. They've got to make the car as good as it can be, like the road car, but on steroids, and I think we've achieved that. We can't show you this complete car right now as much as I'd like to. There's a lot of IP and work going on still in finalising bodywork and it'll be revealed at the appropriate time. All of these decisions, the bodywork, the engine platforms, they're all being signed off at the top of town. You know, North America knows exactly what we're doing down here in Australia. So to have their involvement, it's, it's great. It shows you how powerful our series is and how well respected it is. And knowing that um, now in supercars we match the downforce levels, we make sure each car is paratised as well as it can be, you've got more freedom to make it look as cool as possible. You're not worried about, oh yeah, that's going to give away a bit of downforce, or that's going to add a bit of drag. The teams need these manufacturers. They bring passion, they bring loyalty, they bring a fan base, you know, they bring funding, they, they, they bring so much to our um, category. They bring relevance and they bring, um, what's the word, they, they validate us. They've been heavily involved in. Um, fr right from the top, and I mean the very top of, of GM uh, in the United States. And that shows you really, and demonstrates to, to everyone, I think, how, how enthusiastic they are about this Gen 3 race car. On a world scale, on a global scale, they give us credibility. I, I think we help ourselves as a sport a lot, keep ourselves in the in the, also in the frame worldwide, you know, as, a, as the premier touring car category based on circuit racing. Uh, we, need to, we need to have that credibility that those brands bring us to help us have that stature, which then feeds through to sponsors, it feeds through to drivers, it feeds through to, to media deals. And, and of course, that's all backed up by, by a fan base, hopefully. Yeah, this whole program, we've, we've set up a bit of a world council, so we had Jim Campbell, very top of GM, we had Mark Rushbrook, very top of Ford Motorsport. They've been involved from the start. Now, an important part also of that manufacturer relevance is where we've come from. I mean, forever. 
Collingwood versus Carlton, State of Origin, Maroon versus Blues, we have been Red versus Blue, Holden versus Ford. Now, that's going to continue and that's great news because if you've ever been a Holden supporter, well, by default, you've been a General Motors Holden supporter. And Camaro is General Motors. Sure, the badge ain't red anymore, it's blue. But it's still very much the red camp versus the blue camp. And I think that's really good news. The transfer of the fan base from, in our case, with the, the GM Holden fans to the GM Chevrolet fans, to be honest, I'd be very surprised if it isn't almost automatic because they'll identify with the V8 product. They'll identify with how brawny and how muscular these cars are, the noise they make and hopefully the way they race. So for manufacturers, it's brand marketing. It's badge marketing of the particular vehicle in a sporting and competitive environment to win the hearts, the minds and the loyalty of fans. And we should be so lucky to have so many of you. It's about projecting those brands and making feel, people feel good about those brands. Now, I'm not going to suggest that the Gen 3 cars are full of road-going production parts because they're not. It's more the external surfaces, the engine architecture. The, the manufacturers want to have their brand out there. They want to have the, the brands racing that are not necessarily all about the actual cars they're racing. I mean, for instance, the, the Ford Ranger outsells the Mustang 10 or 12 to 1. And uh, so it's really about selling Rangers. And for Chevrolet in this country, it's really about selling Silverados. The other thing is in a world of motorsport, if you do like sophisticated production sports cars that are almost built as race cars off the showroom floor, well, knock your socks off. GT's out there for you. It's a great category, no problem at all. And over here, if you like the really manufacturer relevant, smaller, slicker, modern, super high tech little race cars, well, TCR's out there for you. But sitting here in the middle is what supercars is. These cars are designed to be the premium, to be big, fast, risky. That require the best and highest skilled drivers in the world to master them. very best teams, touring car teams in the world, to run them. The market has migrated to smaller cars, SUVs, utilities, and they're not supercars. So I reckon we finally arrived at that, that crossroads, you know, are we manufacturer relevant or are we sports and entertainment and whilst they're not mutually exclusive I actually pleasingly think we're finally arriving at the we're probably more sports and entertainment but we've got some manufacturer relevance piggybacking along for the ride. We're a bit of everything we are a bit of everything we want to appeal to the manufacturers but equally we can't take our eye off what we want to deliver for the fans we're entertainment I don't think you can always hark back to previous eras where you just want to be exclusively manufacturer relevant. I mean, if I go back to the era that I love, Brock, Johnson, Moffat, etc., that decade at Bathurst, say, in the 70s, back then, typically, there was one, maybe two cars on the lead lap, usually one, right? If I fast forward now to all the evolution we've done to our race cars, we have more than half the field typically on the lead lap at the end of Bathurst, and the race isn't one by one lap, two laps, three laps, six laps. Races are typically won by six tenths, eight tenths, one second or three seconds. He had a three second margin, he blocks down the inside because he can. He cops a whack and another whack and Mostert goes through on the inside. This is huge in Australian motorsport.
And that's because of the development of the race cars as a racing product rather than manufacturers just going racing, which is different. But we're not that. And as much as we loved the days where you drive vehicles off the showroom floor and race them, well, they're long gone. This category has got so much to be proud of, so much to enjoy and harness. And we don't have to reinvent this wheel. We've just got to tweak it here and there. We've already got a great product. Hopefully we're going to have a better product again. So we want to wear the t-shirts, we want to wear the caps, we want to wear the brand. This car is low, it's wide, it's fat. It looks good, it's got great wheels, the bodywork looks amazing. So Gen 3 is manufacturer relevant to the extent that allows those manufacturers to showcase their hero cars. At the end of the day, we want this to be a show. Up on a platform that is really aspirational and it portrays an image that for both Ford and GM, you know what? We race, we compete, we are competitive.